Today we started our worship out by bringing a bowl full of dirt to our altarpiece. The bowl represents us, and the dirt represents all of that stuff that we lean on and rely on to get through life, to be successful. Our intellect, our education, our networking, beauty, strength, social status, all of these things that we make so important in our lives to get through it successfully that we don't rely on God. And it's only until we empty ourselves of all of these things that are not of God can God really fill us up. And only then can we find the path through the dark wood. The path that God is calling us to walk. Now Nicodemus was not ready to empty himself. He was not ready to give up ego or what he knew was right. And we know this because of the details that were given in this story. So we hear at the very beginning that Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And when we think of Pharisees, we often think of the people who helped put Jesus on the cross. Yes, there were Pharisees who were leaders of the Jewish people, Jewish faith, that wanted to keep the Roman power with Rome because Rome had given them power and they wanted to keep their power too. So these Pharisees, when Jesus came teaching these new ways where the low were lifted high and the high were, met, were made low and, and all of these different ideas that were trying to take power away from those who had it, they got nervous and they wanted to kill Jesus. They wanted to stop Jesus and his movement. And so when we hear of a Pharisee, we often think of this group. But we can't put all Pharisees into the same group. Because there was this other group of Pharisees who really just wanted to be good leaders of the Jewish people. They wanted to teach Torah. They wanted to teach Jewish writings that helped people in their faith. They were great leaders of the temple. And that was the group that Nicodemus was a part of, and that's why he came to talk to Jesus. He wanted to learn more about this rabbi and this new teaching that he was giving. But did you notice that Nicodemus came at night? So why did Nicodemus come at night? Why wouldn't he come during the day? Because as much as he was a part of this group of Pharisees, he still had to interact with both groups. And so Nicodemus didn't want to come during the day because someone might find out that he came to visit Jesus, someone who didn't like Jesus, because Jesus was challenging the powerful. So if, if they learned that Nicodemus went and asked Jesus questions and was curious about his teachings, he would lose his reputation. He would lose his social status. And Nicodemus wasn't ready to empty himself of that. So he came to Jesus at night. As he began to talk to Jesus and Jesus explained things to him, Jesus says to Nicodemus, Are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? Nicodemus had spent, honestly, the majority of his life, ever since he was a little boy, learning about Torah and learning about these Jewish writings. And Jesus comes along and teaches him something new. And Nicodemus says, no, that's not what I know to be true. That's not what I've studied. So Nicodemus is holding on so tightly to what he thinks he knows. Like Jesus says, we speak of what we know and what we testify to what we have seen. 
So Nicodemus is holding on so tightly to what he knows and what he has seen that he's not able to listen to Jesus. And so Jesus says, if you're not willing or if you're not able to listen to me talking about earthly things and believing them, then how can you ever possibly hear what I have to say about godly and heavenly things and know and believe them? Because Nicodemus wasn't willing to empty himself of his ego. He wasn't willing to empty himself of all those things that he thought he knew to be true to be able to listen to the Son of God, to Jesus Christ, who is coming with this radical, amazing new gospel. Nicodemus wasn't able to hear it because he wasn't able to empty himself. And so he stayed in the dark wood. He stayed in that space where he didn't know how to teach his people. He didn't know about this new teaching of Jesus Christ. He didn't know what to do, how to, how to deal with all this new stuff. And because of that, because he wasn't able to empty himself, God wasn't able to fill him back up. And so Nicodemus stayed in the dark wood. So many of us stay in the dark wood because we aren't able to let go. We aren't able to release all of those things in our lives that we lean on in order to be successful in our minds, to walk down the paths we think are right. But until we're able to empty ourselves of all of that stuff, can God fill us back up with what we actually need? And only then can we understand God's path out of the dark wood. In his book, Gifts of the Dark Wood, which this sermon series is all about, Eric talks about one of the things that one of the first steps of emptying ourselves is humility. He writes, when we accept the full weight of our brokenness, it becomes clear that I have no inerrant ability to find my path in the world or follow it while relying on my own power or even my own faithfulness and morality. It takes so much humility to stand before God and say, I'm broken. I'm broken and I can't fix myself. I don't know what path to take. I don't know where to go or what to do. I'm broken and I need help. It's only when we realize that in our own power, we can't fix ourselves. We can't find our own path. It's only a power that is greater than ourselves that shows us how to get out of the dark wood, that shows us the right path to be on. Eric also writes, the word humble comes from the Latin root humus or earth, which is also the root of human. To be humble is to be of the earth. All humans are of the earth. So we need a power higher than ourselves. Traditionally, we see heaven as above. And so we need a power higher than ourselves, bigger than ourselves. And that only can come from God. So the first step in emptying ourselves is being humble enough to realize that it's not our intellect, it's not our power, it's not our abilities that help us to live our fullest lives. We only can be our real selves and live our fullest lives when we let God fill us up with all of those things that are of God. At the end of all of our sermons, all of the sermons during this sermon series, we're going to have a time of reflection. A time to reflect on what we've just heard. So today we're going to reflect 
on what it means to empty ourselves of all of those things that are not of God, that we rely on, that we lean on instead of leaning on God. And we're going to do that today by watching a video of glitter falling in water. Now at the beginning of this video, there's a lot of glitter. Because let's be honest, when we empty ourselves and begin down the path of emptying ourselves, there's a lot to empty. There's a lot that's standing between us and God, letting God fill us up. And so at the beginning, there's a lot of glitter, but then the glitter begins to settle. And then there's less and less glitter until eventually we can begin to see the emptiness, the space that is left for God to fill us up with all that we need. So I invite us to get comfortable and to take the next minute or two reflecting on how we can empty ourselves and allow God to fill us. Amen. <laughs> 